Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a reading pillow. And a reading pillow has a pocket on the front that you can insert whatever book you're reading. And you can even, if you have extra reading glasses, you can tuck that in there. Now this is just all made out of quilting fabric. This has sort of a back to school theme on it. You could give it to a boy or a girl. And then this one here, this is really cute. I made this design from my embroidery machine and you can make it for any age. Maybe put uh, some things on there that represent any hobby they should happen to have. And this pillow here has two little hearts on it that are machine applique on. And if you want instructions on how to do machine applique, it's really, really easy. There will be a link below your YouTube screen on how to get started in doing this. Now in this video, I'm not teaching any of the applique or embroidery design. I'm just showing you how to make just the pillow with a pocket on it. So you can select any fabrics that you like. So let's get started. All of the cutting instructions for the sizes of all the different pieces are listed below your YouTube screen. And also don't forget, I am making this pillow to fit a 16 inch square inch pillow form. So I'm now working on the front section of the pillow and this is the piece that goes behind the pocket. So I'm layering my fabrics. I put just some plain fabric on the back and then I have cotton batting right here and then I've laid my piece of fabric for the front of the pillow on top. I've cut the piece of fabric for the back and the cotton batting a little bit larger because often when you're doing quilting stitches, your fabric shifts on top. So you, you want to cut all those other two pieces a little bit larger and then you trim it off later. So here's some examples of quilting stitch patterns. These are on a diagonal, but you can also do them straight up and down or straight side to side. This is a straight stitch and this is a serpentine stitch. And if you have a computerized sewing machine, I'm pretty sure you have this stitch on there. Make sure you use a presser foot that has a wide opening on it. I like using a walking foot, which helps the fabric to shift through evenly underneath the presser foot, which will prevent a lot of the stretching or little pin tucks that you get. Make sure that you pin all of your fabric layers together. I just place straight pins all over to hold it. And then on this one, I did the diagonal pattern. I went from corner to corner first, and then I went out. You can go out two to three inches, do another line. Keep repeating that until you get all the way out to the end. Then I'll go on the other side and stitch across that way. Then I'll turn it and do the pattern going the other way. When you do the pocket, here's my pocket section with the applique design on it. I didn't put any lining fabric behind it because I'm going to be using something else in a little while, which I'll show. So I just have the cotton batting and the fabric for the front of the pocket. After I did my quilting stitches, I then trimmed off all of the excess cotton batting and fabric that is behind the back on this piece. So trim both sections so all the fabric is even. Once this section is done, then you want to take your fabric that's for the border up here at the top of the pocket, which I showed you earlier in the video. Place it over that. And you're going to pin the top edge. So if you have a, a directional print on this where it's going in a specific direction, figure out what is your top and then this is where you're going to pin it. So pin it up here and then you're going to stitch a one half inch seam all the way across. After stitching, press your seam on the back side. Then take your fabric and fold it back like this. 
and then press the seam on the front side. Then take the fabric and fold it over to the back like this so that when you're done you have this nice little border up here. Take your two pieces for the back and take the center edge that will be placed in the center later in the pillow and you're going to fold those two edges over one quarter inch and then press it all the way down. Fold it again a quarter of an inch and press it all the way down and then stitch along that folded edge all the way across and again you do it on both pieces only the edges that are going to be placed in the center. After you've done your stitches along those two edges there, then make sure you press this seam nice and flat. Now place the pocket piece over the front section on the lower half and place pins along these three edges or use the wonder clips if you have those. Then doing a basting stitch real close to the edge on all three sides. Have the section that's for the front of the pillow facing up so you're looking at the pretty side. Take your pieces that are for the back of the pillow cover and you're bringing it front side down so you can see where you've stitched here. This is where you folded it over. That goes in the center area of your pillow. Line up your edges along here, the raw edges. Take your other section for the back, overlap it, and line up the raw edges on this side. Then place pins around all four edges and then stitch a one half inch seam all the way around. When you're stitching, you want to make sure that where your pocket is, uh, the top of the pocket is along here on the sides, you want to back stitch over this because this is a stress area. And also back stitch where these two strips of fabric overlap. Make sure you do it, that you do it at the top and the bottom. After stitching, you want to trim the fabric off around all the corners. I usually trim mine down to where it's about an eighth of an inch wide, or the seam is. So go ahead and trim across this way, and then take a little bit off on this side, trim it down, and then go over on this side and do the same thing. Open up your back section and begin turning it front side out. On the back, pull the top flap open and insert the pillow. Then squish the pillow together in the, to the, towards the center and begin inserting it. Be careful not to tug on your stitches. And we're all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. These are very quick to make and they're really a lot of fun and it's a great gift idea. If you're interested in other types of pillows that you can make and other beginner sewing projects, check below your YouTube screen for those video links. Make sure you also follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.